Hello and welcome to the July Scrawler Box. Okay, I completely failed at opening this box. Definitely opened it a little bit more than I should have because I already forgot how to open these. But let's look at the contents inside. So we have the Zine for June. Okay, so this is actually for June, not July. I should have known that. This got here in July, I know. This is this video is coming out at the end of July. But I just wanted to give you guys give you guys that heads up. And I think this is just gonna give us our products and all that other useful information. So I'll put that to the side. Okay, so in here we have our supply list that I'm going to lift first for the month of June. And I am going to keep these to the side just in case I need to explain that. I can talk about that right there. And our candy is this called Chews. Okay, so I'm gonna try this again and it'll probably get interrupted again because people love doing their lawns on the weekend. So all we got to see was the sticker and the candy. Let's move on to more of the supplies. Here we have this, this is a Prismalo pencil. So it is pretty much a colored pencil that is also wa water soluble so that you can use as a regular watercolor pencil. So that we'll put here. Next we have this Sweet Juicy Boy, a jelly roll in the size 08. And I'm actually really happy to get this. I have a jelly roll, but I think mine's in a size 03. So it's really too small to get any worthwhile details. So I'm hoping because this one is a bit thicker, we'll be able to do better accent marks and then I'll be able to swap this with the other one that I have. Next, we have this beautiful Sea White Synthetic Paintbrush. It's a round brush in the size six. And look at that. I don't actually have any paintbrushes with white bristles. And I think that looks really, really cool. I think if all of these subscription boxes can give me paintbrushes, I would be a very happy girl because man, I love paintbrushes. So that's going to be added to our collection. And I think it's a really good size. I think especially for this kind of thing, it's not too small, it's not too big. It'll give us some room to work around with, with whatever paper is under here. But before that, let's open up this box that we have here as well. And these are called the Derwent Ink Tense Color Blocks. And I read the insert here and pretty much these are like water soluble pigments which create a ink like consistency which is going to be interesting because instead of just like watercolor blocks these once they once you paint with them and they dry down they are permanent like inks which if you've already seen my hey Kala art box review i am now a fan of inks so i am actually excited to use these and it looks like they gave us a good color selection we have a bit of primary colors i mean obviously that's a bit too dark but we do have some primary colors. We have green, purple, and this nice tan color, which I think is a really good selection. I like to have a nice neutral basic color scheme that you can kind of mix around and get varying tones with. And also sometimes it's hard to mix more of like a skin tone shade with like just primary colors. I mean, if you have a bit of sense of like color knowledge, it is okay to do but if you don't this is going to be nice and of course with all the other colors i know we'll be able to deepen this add more of a yellow or a red undertone so that'll be fun to play around with and then of course we have our art print for this month and this is really cute it definitely has a oil pastel look to it which i think is really nice and it gives me some ideas like the colors pretty much look just like these colors like they use it straight up they didn't mix it which i think is really lovely that just the color scheme alone can create such a beautiful rainbow effect and this is by alice coles aka hello alice really i did not know that i actually follow her oh nice and the last thing that we have here is some watercolor paper and I already read they gave us 12 sheets of watercolor paper and they said it has a texture. So obviously it is gonna be cold pressed and that is exciting. My goodness, if I could get free paper, free paper, well, I guess not free cause I spent money, but <laughs> if I could always get paper and brushes for watercolor in these boxes, I would be a very happy girl because that is my favorite thing to use. Okay, it totally took me a little while to open this up, but let's go ahead and swatch our supplies so we can go and make something with this. It looks like our challenge is spirit animal, which <laughs> I actually have a spirit totem pole, which is something I created in high school. And it was a very funny totem of all of my spirits. And I know I had a squirrel on there, an owl on there and a lion on there. Okay, so let's start off 
with the Prismalo pencil. Okay, it seems to write like a regular color pencil, but I have some water here, so I'm gonna use the paintbrush and see that. It spreads to be very, uh, very gray, but it looks like you can really, like it's very good to lift. Like you can't even see that square as clearly. I can just blend it into oblivion, which I like. I wish they didn't give us black though. I feel like black is a very boring color. And if they would have just given us a dark, any other color, like a dark blue, a dark red, a purple, dark green, like anything that's a color that not necessarily black, I think I would like that a little bit better. But this is still gonna be good too because we'll just be able to do like line art possibly with it. And I think with this, because we have a lot of water soluble things, I'll probably do everything in pencil and then add the black as a detail after the fact. The next things I guess pretty much to try are all of these. The blocks themselves are also like, they feel so smooth and soft and they definitely rub off a little bit. I mean, it's probably hard to see because this is yellow, but it's not rubbing the same way. Like if this was oil pastel or chalk, my fingers would be completely vibrantly yellow. So that's just something I wanted to mention about these, but we'll see how they work on paper. I'm not the biggest fan of using blocks because like, look at that, that looks like a crayon. And I know you can get good effects with these. It's just, you really have to blend it out. And I mean, I'm glad that these are ink blots, the ink blocks so that I can go ahead and blend them out with water and make it look smooth. Oh man, when they say <laughs> ink tents, they do mean ink tents. I like this. I feel like I don't really use watercolored pencils, so I can't do a nice even comparison, but typically I know these things don't end up so intense. The color payoff can sometimes be not as vibrant or there as you would want them to be. So that's really, really nice. Isn't that beautiful? Look at it. It's like a rainbow on the paintbrush. It's so nice, but also kind of sucks because I doubt that that's ever going to fully go away. So <laughs> there are all of those colors on there. And then I didn't really think that was going to work on there and it didn't work on there. <laughs> and now I just have a mess of black on this nib. This is definitely going to be something to try more so on these. Let's see if I can try it here. So there's, <laughs> there's that. Okay, so that is all of the colors and they're really nice. They're really interesting. I like the texture. I gotta say, it's not necessarily like anything I've ever used before. It's definitely gonna be interesting coloring in with them because I'm not sure if I wanna use the straight up colors or really blend them before I use them. Going back to our art print of the month, I'm looking because it looks like she pretty much used like these exact colors and I like that what she did is like use a lot of texture and just kind of added a plop of color and then added some of the other colors on top. Pardon me, my brain always goes to mixing before putting it on the paper. I know this is a nice painterly way of doing things when you kind of can just like build colors off of each other. It's just not something I'm the most comfortable with doing. So that is something I'm trying to keep in mind. Also, since our challenge is spirit animal, I'm trying to think, between a lion and an owl. Lion has probably been my spirit animal for a lot longer in the sense that I am a Leo. I was born in August and I love lions. I love that they are the king of the jungle. I like that powerful aura that they give off, this confidence that they give off. So I really, really, really like lions. But owls are definitely something, I mean, when I say a long time, I think the lion thing is just because I've always been like a Leo. The owls I've liked for a very long time too, at least, throughout high school and maybe even before then. And I'm 23 now, so that's a long time for those who don't know. And owls, I, I love them so much. They are something I can draw constantly. They're something I like because of their wisdom. They are, they are like, they are a sign of wisdom, I should say. And I really like that. I really aspire to be a person with a lot of wisdom. I also like their big beady eyes. I have been told I have pretty big eyes. So I feel like that has always been a connection I have with them. I like that they are predatory animals, that they hunt. <laughs> I, I don't know, something about power and being ruthless is something I really draw, draw near to. Also, I want to say too, before I get into this, I have been in a sort of art block for a few weeks. And this happens to me often, all of the years of my life. And I know any artist has gone through art block. And I know for people who are definitely putting themselves out there on the internet and those who actually have a job in art, they really can push through those art blocks and just kind of keep going at it. 
for me, it's always been a little bit hard to do. I am such a, like, if I'm having a stage of art block, I just put everything down. I just will worry about it later. I'll come back to it in a few weeks, a few months, even a few years. I've had art block that lasted me a few years back in like early college years, I should say. And I know that's not good at all. And it's very hard for me to like work through it, work on it. But that's why I kind of like that I'm doing the YouTube thing. It's really going to push me to doing it, to drawing something. Even if I'm not happy with it, at least I drew something. So if today doesn't come out super nice, I just want to say like, it's okay if your things aren't coming out nice. Sometimes it's just important to actually do something, which is much easier said than done if I do say so myself. This owl looks like he's on some business. <laughs> okay, there is an owl sketch and it looks just as messy as I thought it was gonna come out. And I think that's just because of me being so like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> But besides that, I do like how colorful it is. I definitely got the colors muddied. I used a lot of colors and I just kind of painted it all with water and blended them a lot. But I think it looks kind of cool. It kind of gives me like a, like a gem effect. Like to me, this looks like a glass jewel encrusted owl, like a jewel encrusted owl sculpture is kind of what it looks like. And I know it looks pretty crazy, but I kind of like it. Let's go ahead and try changing up the colors a little bit more. Okay, clearly this is way too dark. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could do purples and blues instead of like the orange and purples, but I think it just like really darkened up the bird to a place that wasn't good. And I think even if I would have made these wings a lot lighter, I don't think I would have liked it as much as I like this one. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the final piece. And for this, I'm going to draw it with pencil. Because that black pencil smudges, I don't want it to look as dirty and muddy as the trial piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and use a regular pencil, sketch it all out, color it in, and then use the black as accents like I said I would. And then hopefully once it dries, we'll be able to add some pops of highlight with the jelly roll. And then that'll be all of the supplies and it'll be my spirit animal. Okay, so I thought I was gonna do more of like a horn owl or like a true owl but i found this beautiful picture of a barn owl and i think it's really going to capture this like gem like this jewel encrusted owl look that i'm going for so i'm going to go with the barn owl they just look so mystical and so nice and i think for spirit animal when we're thinking something a little bit more spirited something a little bit more foggy of an idea i really want this mystical looking bird so this actually got me excited i really like this picture that i found and he has all these little gems. It looks like gems, but that's just like their fur, some speckling on his fur. If I can find the picture again, I will put it in the video. And I love that. I think that'll be nice to add with like maybe the white afterwards or even the black with white to give it even more of a jewel encrusted look. <laughs> so let me go ahead and draw this guy. Okay, and that is our owl sketch. And I really like how the sketch turned out. I like this owl, he looks pretty cool. I mean, I definitely made his body a little bit too short in the actual picture just to fit him all there. Probably could have moved him up just a few inches a little bit higher, but I always mess that up for some reason, but it's okay because I like him enough. I think we're gonna go in and again, kind of keeping in mind this color scheme, but also keeping in mind the reference that I have, I kind of want to see if I can make the feathers look a bit more the way they are. So I'm gonna try my hardest to do that. And so let me just slightly erase these lines and I will check back in with you guys intermittently. Okay, so I wanted to come on real quick. Um, like I said, I typically am not the person to mix pigments on the paper. I usually like to do that separately and then put it on the paper, but I've been really just enjoying this painterly style with this with these products and just kind of going for it and really just doing all of my layers in one go. But I also wanted to say that for this, I've been putting a lot of water down on the paper 
and I typically don't do this, but I've been kind of like dunking my paintbrush into my water and just like putting a lot of water on this. And that's because I really like it to blend very smooth. I really want it to kind of blend together and water is what makes it blend. So I've been doing that, which I know is gonna make it dry a little bit slower. Like on the wing, I know it's gonna take a little bit longer. And that just means I have to kind of wait before I can do the accents with the black and the accents with the white, which is fine, but it's interesting. Also, I know because of like art block, I get these moments where I'm kind of, kind of rushing. Just since I'm not super happy with anything, I'm just kind of going pretty quickly. So this isn't taking me too long to do. And if I was really caring to make it perfect, I wouldn't be doing this layer right now because the green is clearly not dry. So you can see it's kind of blending in. But at the same time, I think it's the blending effect that I like. So it's like I'm rushing and it's kind of sloppy, but at the same time, I think it's gonna give a good effect, a better effect than if I really was taking it slow and coloring with each color individually. I think this is gonna give us better gradients and kind of a more organic feel to the piece because I don't really know what's gonna happen exactly until I'm painting. And it's like the way these colors blend together, it's like, oh, it's interesting. So it's pretty much like letting the water do the talking. And I think because I have such a heavy heart, heavy art block going on right now, this is kind of what I need. This is kind of what I like. And it's really making me feel good. And I think that's the important thing that I forget all the time with art block is that you get to this stage where you're judging your art very hard and you hate everything you do. That you need these moments where you're just kind of having fun with it. I'm really glad I did an owl because I love owls and this guy is just making me really happy. Even though he looks very colorful, he looks like a bird of paradise. Like he looks like he could come from an island, a tropical island, more so than how these barn owls are typically more understated to blend in with their surroundings. But it's like, it's kind of just fun. I'm still waiting on the paint to dry, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try this candy out. I have no idea what flavor it is either. Oh, it's a two-tone. I honestly think that's like a strawberry banana smoothie starburst. New from Swizzles, the classic drumstick lolly in an individually wrapped sweet, suitable for vegetarians, vegans, and coliacs. Okay, so here is the final piece. This is my barn owl, spirit animal, drool encrusted owl that might be a real owl. <laughs> a magical owl that is very rare to find. It is like a unicorn. This is the night barn owl. And I think it came out pretty good. I don't think it's my best. I don't think I tried as hard as I would like to have tried, but did I have fun doing it? Yes. And I think that is all that matters in the end. So tell me guys what you think about this and tell me if you get scrawler box, how you felt about this box and always glad to have a new paintbrush. I don't know. This I feel like is nice, but it's not really my favorite thing of this box. But yes, enough with the rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please have a great day, have a great week, have a great life, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.